Right, well thank you for joining me. So I'm going to talk about the service model canvas um, and what I'm going to cover today. So I'm going to look at uh, what the service model canvas is, how you actually uh, fill in the canvas um, and when you should use it or when you might use it within a project or um, when considering a, a product or service. Um, so I think it's always useful to uh, know a little bit about uh, your presenter um, uh, within a session such as this. So uh, my name is Neil Turner, so I actually um, run UX for the Masses, so I write the articles and put up the presentations um, and I'm a uh, sort of seasoned UX professional I guess, um, working within the UK in, in Cambridge, um, have been working in UX for over 10 years now as a, a sort of UX designer and researcher. And I previously worked uh, both in-house and for a number of uh, consultancies and digital agencies. So what is the service um, model canvas? So the, um, the service model canvas is actually um, so something that I've created, um, I guess, based on or, or loosely based on things like the business model canvas and the lean canvas. So for those that are familiar or might not be familiar with the business model canvas, so the, the business model canvas has um, been around for a little while and it's a, a useful way of, of documenting and thinking about either new or existing sort of business models. So uh, it might be quite useful for a startup or even for an existing um, sort of business model. And thinking about some of the key elements of that model, things like you know what is the proposition to the customer, how how's the business going to make money, what what kind of revenues uh, revenue streams exist, what sort of costs exist, what sort of key resources are required, and that sort of thing. Um, and it's a a really good way of of um, thinking about those those sort of questions and you know sort of thought starters for those questions, um, and also putting. And documenting putting everything sort of together so uh, a little while ago I actually attended a, a workshop that, that utilized the business model canvas and I thought well I think this would work really well for for services um, you know there seem to be some some key stuff missing from the canvas so I've kind of taken it uh, and remodeled it slightly so before we start looking at the service uh, model canvas uh, it's an important question so what what is a service? You know, when we talk about uh, a service, what what do I mean? And I've got a short sort of video which um, helps to explain that, hopefully. What is a service? A service is an interaction between a customer and a provider or an organization to help the customer get things done. Every day we all use a number of services. We do our banking online. We take public transit. We visit museums. We get coffee at our neighborhood cafe. And we go to the doctor's office. These services are made up of one or more touch points, points of interaction involving a user need in a specific space and time. For example, a visit to the doctor's office can be made up of the following touch points. Scheduling an appointment, checking in at the front desk, sitting in the waiting room, seeing the doctor, and receiving a follow-up note. All of these touch points were designed through a process called service design. Service design helps ensure the best possible experience for your customers no matter how they choose to access your services. And service design isn't just customer focused. Good service design improves employee experience as well. It can increase efficiency, increase value, and turn customers into repeat customers and advocates. Okay, so that, uh, that's a little bit about what a service is, and I, I guess what service to design um, sort of is um, as a starter really. So, um, question you might have, well, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a UX designer, I'm a, I'm a UX researcher, uh, you know, I work in US, I, I don't work in service design, what, you know, what's this got to do with me? I'm not a service designer. Um, 
but actually, um, I think that UX design, in a lot of ways, you know, it really is sort of service design. It's very similar to service design, because um, as a as a UX designer, um, in a sense, you're also a service designer as well. Okay, you might not be able to design the whole service, but you need to consider uh, and think about the wider um, sort of service and the wider experience. You know, experience is, is, is more than just, you know, the, the, the kind of clicks and the taps and, and that sort of thing, or, or, or the user interface. Um, it's about a much, you know, exists within a, a wider service that a customer experiences. Um, and, and a, you know, a UX design, whether it's, you know, a, a website, an application, a mobile app or whatnot, it's not used in isolation, it's part of a wider customer uh, you know, part of a wider service the customer uses, and um, you know there's 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 sometimes the misconception that UX design is really just about the user interface. It's almost UX and UI are interchangeable. You know, a UX designer is a UI designer, um, but I think actually you know UX design is 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 much bigger than just the user interface, um, and you know it's not just about what a user sees and interacts with in a, in a screen um, it's also about considering that 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 larger service uh, and that larger kind of customer uh, experience now it's about looking at that that bigger picture if you like um, and like a, a service designer a UX designer need, needs to consider that 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 wider customer experience so, you know they, they need to look at the bigger picture um, you know, even if some of that experience is is kind of out of their control or, or is outside of that 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 UX design, you know, there there might be um, little scope to influence, you know, what happens in other aspects of a service. But it's still important to consider that um, as any part of a UX design and think about, okay. You know what's the customer going to be experiencing? What sort of channels are the customer going to be using? Where does this fit fit within their, their wider customer journey? Um, and also, ultimately, any service and, and any uh, UX design, yeah, it, it needs to make a return on investment. It needs to meet some of the you know some of those some of those goals. Um, you know, reasons for being almost. Um, otherwise, it's not going to last very long. And um, Thinking about the wider service and things like, okay, you know, what's the customer proposition? What are some of the revenue streams? What's some of the KPIs? It helps to consider, okay, um, what what sort of performance is going to be required um, for this for this design and for this wider service as well. So thinking about um, the more sort of business model side of things and, and the more business goals and objectives. So, um, so the Service model very much like the the business can, canvas. You see, it's kind of split up split up into sections. So and and again, these are really kind of thought starters and, and ways of capturing aspects of the service which are quite important when considering either the design of the service or even the design of an aspect of that service. You know, whether it's a, a component. Um, so looking at things like you know who are the users, what what's the proposition, the service proposition. You know, why would someone use the service? Um, what are some of the channels that will be used to deliver this service and that sort of thing. So I'm going I'm to walk through each of these sections and I'm actually going to use a, a, an example that hopefully you've heard of um, and that you're familiar with uh, and that example is uh, Spotify which is obviously a uh, music streaming service so a very popular music streaming um, sort of service so you can sign up and um, listen to music, create playlists, share playlists and that sort of thing. And for each of the sections, I'm going to talk about the kind of questions that you might ask, kind of information that you'd want to capture, um, and then look at um, Spotify and, okay, taking Spotify as an example, what, what some of those things might be. So the first section we're going to look at um, are the, the users. So every service needs users. You know, without users um, of a service, it's, you know, th there is no service really, a, a service without users. You know, <clears throat> you know, in the same way, does a does a uh, if a tree falls in the woods uh, and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? You know, if the service has no users. Is it really a service? 
very philosophical question for you there. Um, and um, for the users, we're really looking at, okay, who are the users of the service? Uh, and not just who are the users, but also there might be different segments, um, different sorts of users, you know, who are the key users? So we might have, for example, different types of users that can be identified. Um, and it's really obviously, you know, when considering any service design or user experience design, it's, it's really important to be able to think about, okay, who are the users going to be and, and think about some, you know, maybe information about, about their users, you know, what, what's their, 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 their kind of characteristics, you know, what's their kind of behavior, what, what kind of things we're we expecting them to, to need to be able to do to want to the service and that sort of thing. So, um, so for Spotify, we're considering the users, you know, obviously we're looking at things like, um, uh, obviously people that are interested in, 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 in music, but I think there's probably a number of segments of kind of Spotify users. So you might, for example, have, um, music lovers, you know, people that really are very passionate about music, you know, they might have a, a large and well-established collection, um, you know, they might go to gigs and, and see bands and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and obviously that's a really, that's going to be a really important sort of user segment and user group for Spotify, you know, the kind of people that um, are going to be uh, some of the trendsetters almost, if you will, um, and, and helping to, you know, get the word out there. Um, you might have people that are maybe not, you know, sort of like kind of music likers or, 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 or um, that sort of thing. So people are maybe not quite so passionate about music, but still it's an important you know, part of their, of their life and, and their daily um, you know, goings on, I guess. You know, they, they, you know, they'll, they'll listen to, to music uh, during the day. Um, and then I guess you might have um, those people that mus listen to music much more rarely. So, you know, maybe in the background or um, in the car and that sort of thing. Um, and from a, uh, a user group perspective, um, you know, we might say, well, okay, we've identified these different groups and, and they might have slightly different needs and they might have slightly different um, sort of requirements from, a, from an experience perspective. Um, you know, taking Spotify, the kind of music likers, the kind of people that, you know, like music but are not really, really passionate are, are likely to be the largest group, but arguably those kind of music lovers are, are going to be um, the most important because they're going to be some of the early trendsetters and most active users. So, you know, they can, they can help to really spread the word and, 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 and help showcase Spotify. Um, so we looked at the users, but an, uh, another also important component of a, of a service are all the other people involved. So when you're thinking about a, a service or, or even a, a user experience, um, you don't need to just think about the user, but you also need to think about all, all those other people, all the other actors that are involved in, in delivering that service. So that might be in employees, you know, um, partners, suppliers, um, all the other people that are, that are, that are, are involved with, and, and not necessarily people that a, a user would directly interact with, you know, they might be more sort of back end or, or, or back room almost sort of actors. Um, but people that without who, you know, without them being there, the service wouldn't be able to be delivered because, um, because designing a service isn't just about designing something that works for the users, but it needs to be able to work, um, and consider all the other people involved as well. Um, you know, the, the people actually delivering that service. So for example, if it's something which works it's fantastic for users, but, but it's terrible for those people to trying to deliver that service. Again, it's, it's, it's not going to perform and it's not going to do as well as, um, as it could be. So for Spotify, so some of the actors might be, um, things like Spotify support staff. So the kind of people that would answer queries and, and, and questions from customers, um, and, and customer service staff, um, and actors might be, um, people that, you know, arrange things like sort of marketing and, and, and deal with key suppliers and that sort of thing. Um, and not just people within Spotify, um, you know, other actors might be things like music artists, 
um, the media, so uh, radio stations and that sort of thing that might have featured playlists on Spotify, uh, music labels, but obviously you know licensing their music um, for Spotify, um, and also um, companies for things like advertising uh, and tie-ins, and also even things like uh, bloggers and journalists that might um, either you know blog about Spotify or get involved in in terms of content and, 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 and that sort of thing on Spotify. So these are some of the other people that are, are important for delivering that service and for delivering a, a really great user experience um, for that service. Um, so that's the users and the actors. So the, the service proposition, it's really, um, I guess it can be summed up in, in the question, you know, what's in it for me? You know, why, why, why should I use this service? What, what does the service deliver? Uh, and it's probably the most important question because if a service doesn't you know, deliver, a, you know, it, 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 if it doesn't have a strong proposition, are people going to use it? If it doesn't do something that you know is is um, you know, is useful for people and, and, and what have you, um, that service isn't going to get much use, and it's certainly not going to be um, differentiated from um, you know from the competition because um, otherwise it becomes a bit of a commodity, um, and really things like sort of price and whatnot is is the main differentiator. So um, you know without a strong proposition, you know, users aren't going to use the service. And even even though you might get obviously early adopters and what have you, you know you need a strong proposition and you need a good uh, and, and to be able to at least ident identify and think about that proposition to move beyond just those early adopters and and, and you know become more of a mass um, you know hit that tipping point so to speak where you're getting more and more people using that service. So if we look at Spotify, um, Spotify's proposition is you know all the music you'll ever need. Um, sort of right here so um, you know your favorite artists albums and ready-made playlists so the, the, the proposition is about choice um, about convenience and, and about the user so you know being able to access all, all, all of the music that you know that they'd want to at any point and I guess convenient not having to download that music you know they don't have to set up complex playlists so they, they, those sort of things are set up for them you know they can share um, share playlists and that sort of thing um, so I guess you know it's really about choice and convenience are probably the two the two strongest parts of that proposition um, and not just in terms of proposition but it's really important to consider um, the usage of a of a service so how um, how will the service be used or how how is the service used by by users, you know, what, what sort of things um, would users want to do, what sort of goals and tasks and, and that sort of thing would they want to be able to focus on. Uh, and not just what, what what would users want to do, but also, you know, how frequently would they want to do it? You know, is it going to be used uh, daily, weekly, or is it just going to be used, you know, um, maybe just once or, or, or twice? And of course, you um, for, an, for an existing um, sort of service, hopefully you'd you know you'd have uh, data and information about how that might be used for a for a new service. There's going to be uh, a certain amount of okay, well this is how we'd like it to be used. This is how we think it might be used. Um, so that's why it's really important to try and sort of gather data. So it's not just um, you know guesses. This is this is kind of you know based on information because often how you think a service will be used might be quite different from in, in reality actually how people want to use it and, and how they do actually use it um, and that's where you know the data will tell you the what uh, people are doing and, and not just what you know um, how how you think people might be doing it so for spotify um you know spotify is a it's really a self-service um model so to speak so, so from a usage perspective so the user um, you know they do a lot of the management themselves a lot of the um, selecting music and okay there's, there's there's some content that's created for users um, but obviously some of the key things that people are going to be wanting to doing it's you know listening to music and uh, creating playlists 
looking for new music, um, you know, sharing playlists or creating playlists, um, you know, following artists and that sort of thing. Um, and not just in terms of identifying usage, it's often really useful to identify, okay, these are some of the things that we, that, that we think users are going to be going to be doing or we know they're doing. What, what, what are the really important uh, tasks? What's the really important stuff? What's the stuff that um, that needs to really shine um, and, and needs to have that wow factor? Because um, there's going to be other stuff which um, is less important and maybe you don't need to focus on quite so much. Um, in terms of channels, so it's um, it's very important to, to consider the channels that a service will be delivered through. And when I say channels, I mean um, the you know whether a, a channel might be a, a website or the, the 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 mobile app or um, you know a high street or or telephone. It's kind of the different avenues that a customer can interact with a service. And um, actually, um, so I think the video talked about touch points. So a channel is slightly different from a touch point in so much as a, a touch point is a sort of an instance of interaction with that service, whereas a channel is, is the wider channel. So a, a touch point might be uh, a particular use of a website, whereas the channel will be you know, the web uh, and online in general. Um, and, and certainly, increasingly, um, you know, users expect um, to be able to access a service through, you know, through multiple channels and, and to have a a, a a more sort of seamless experience as well. You know, you don't want someone um, interacting through the web and then not being able to, you know, none of those interactions, for example, are, are, are remembered when they then, you know, call up customer services and, and have an inquiry and that sort of thing. So you need, so even if you're, you're just designing for a particular channel, so maybe you're just designing for for the web, or you're just designing for mobile. You still need to think about okay, what are some of the other channels that the user will use? What what other channels do we need to consider? And and not just what are the channels, which, which channels are most cost effective? Which which channels do we want to kind of nudge people towards or push people towards? So Spotify, for example, um, it pushes everyone to interact largely on online you know if you want to contact spotify it's it's generally not very easy you know you can send you know, inquiries and stuff like that through the website but you know they don't really have a, a telephone line you can call um, with inquiries that you know the the primary channel is um, is online um you know whether that's through the website or, or through an application so as i say with with Spotify, so you're looking at um, you know mobiles, obviously a key channel, um, so you know through their various mobile apps, um, uh, the the web and and, and sort of um, computers. So again, they've got a, an application you can download, or they've got uh, obviously a website that you can use, uh, and increasingly even things like um, uh, TV. So with a smart TV now, you can access Spotify and you can log in and, and you can listen to music. So that's that's kind of the channel. So another really uh, key consideration is is kind of competitors because, again, I've said without a, a really strong proposition, you know, why uh, a user is going to use your service, but also why are they going to use it above above you know what else is out there and 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 in terms of competitors, I don't just mean direct competitors, but also you know alternatives. So. Um, you know who are some of the direct competitors out there, but also what are the other alternatives um, that someone might use? So, for example, um, for Spotify, an obvious direct competitor now is, is Apple. Obviously, they've just launched Apple Music. You know, with a bit of fanfare, very very similar to Spotify. Um, arguably, obviously not as mature and 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 um, certainly the. Uh, in my opinion, anyway, the user experience of Apple Music is is nowhere near what it is for Spotify yet. Um, but an obvious direct competitor. But um, Spotify, you know, don't just have Apple Music as a competitor. You know, you can consider some of the alternatives for a user. You've got you know other services, things like Apple, um, sort of Amazon Music, and also things like sort of YouTube. So watching videos on YouTube, um, 
or e- even sort of physical music so um, you know users buying CDs or um, um, downloading digital music via things like iTunes and and, um, and other services um, but also alternatives like um, sort of radio or even illegal downloads um, so if someone wants to uh, listen to music either their own music or, or or other music out there what alternatives do they have that they might use over Spotify um, and um, you know I think once you start looking at it you start thinking well actually yeah there's 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 a wider group of competitors uh, than I'm actually um, first thought about um, so another key key thing to look at is some of the key activities um, for delivering a service and these are not necessarily so we've looked at usage which is more from a user perspective these are, these are kind of key activities from delivering the service so I guess more from some of the a- other actors and, and the uh, whether it's an organization delivering that service so um, if you were to break the service down into into steps, what are some of those really important steps, and and you know what are the most important activities in terms of delivering that service? And again, there might be um, front of office activities, you know, so dealing, for example, directly with customers, or there might be um, more sort of back office um, activities, so stuff that's done in the background, but which is still key to delivering a service. So, for example, for Spotify. Some of those activities might be things like, um, you know, signing art, signing artists, and, and getting the content on there. Because obviously, a service like Spotify, uh, if it doesn't have the music on there, you know, people aren't going to be, I'm going to want to use it. You know, it, it, it's one of its key propositions is about choice, and there needs to be a lot of choice there. And also curating that content. So, um, you know, you if you've got millions of, of songs out there. Um, Either people are going to have to find stuff they know, or uh, Spotify are going to want to create, you know, playlists and, and create um, ready-made content and, and, and recommendations for, for users. Um, and other activities might be things like sort of blogging, promoting Spotify, so you know, merchandising and market uh, marketing, um, and also. Um, some of the development work, so things like updating the website and app and resolving support issues. So again, some of the key activities that, without which Spotify wouldn't be able to deliver that service. And and as with all these things, um, the idea of the service model canvas is not about capturing everything and, and everything in, in, in a lot of detail. It's just about um, starting to think about some of these things and capturing at a high level some of the key, um, key things to consider. Because um, really, the canvas, it's, it's, it's as I say, it's a, it's, a, it's a set of thought starters and it's, it's a way of just quickly starting to think about um, some of this stuff. Um, and, and a lot of it you'll, you'll need to go and explore in more detail afterwards. Um, so that's kind of the key activities. Key resources um, is more in terms of um, what resources are going to be required to deliver the service so maybe what what kind of resources are going to be required to carry out some of these activities so they might be uh, physical resources so um, you know actually so for example a, a a shop some of those physical resources are going to be you know the goods themselves and and, and um, what have you um, can be some of the people so again for example if you're um, Spotify creating and curating content you know they need people to be able to do that um, and there might there might be also um, less tangible resources so um, you know things like um, cloud servers or, or, or um, means of actually um, running digital services and that sort of thing so this is this is some of the resources um, that are required as part of the service to actually um, carry out some of those act- activities. Um, so for Spotify, some of the key resources might include the uh, Spotify website and, 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 and sort of app, um, and also some of the 
sort of content delivery sort of infrastructure. So um, obviously there's, there's going to be quite a complex infrastructure in terms of actually delivering and um, serving up this music to, to users. Um, and also some of the um, some of those actors probably that, that, that have been identified, so things like the marketing team and customer support team and that sort of thing. And um, so challenges, so we've looked at things like um, key activities and key resources. Challenges is, I guess, an opportunity to start asking some of those difficult questions. So when you've looked at things like the the proposition, and you've looked at things like um, the resources and the activities, there's likely to be stuff that, that comes out and think, well, well okay, um, you know, there's potentially a challenge here. So it's, it's about thinking about what challenges do you foresee in terms of either delivering that service or um, in terms of providing the kind of service that you want to for users. Um, and it's, it's really important to think about not just what current challenges exist, but what kind of challenges maybe do you foresee um, so further down the line. So you can start thinking about, OK, how are we going to deal with this challenge? Do we, you know, how are we going to mitigate this challenge? Or, or is this actually, you know, is this actually a challenge? You might want to validate that as well. So, for example, for Spotify, an obvious channel challenge is um, persuading artists to, to, to make their material available. So there's been a, a recent high profile uh, obviously story of, of Taylor Swift taking a music off Spotify because she wasn't particularly happy with the um, with the model that he used and the way they distribute um, the, the revenue coming in and so that's a key challenge for Spotify you know other challenges might be around things like um, providing a um, well an obvious challenge is now Apple music so how do they persuade people who are very um, in integrated within kind of the Apple brand and the Apple um, sort of um, ecosystem, so to speak, to use Spotify. So that, that's another challenge that, for example, Spotify might think about. Um, and then we're finally on to some of the, I guess, important, but kind of stuff that maybe um, user experience designers and service designers um, you know, don't always consider quite so much, or certainly, um, usually let someone else worry about. But it, but it, but again, it's important to, to think about um, you know uh, sort of costs, not from a okay this is this is you know the exact actual cost of things, but but again, um, any any service exists within a within a business context, and if and if the costs are going to out, outweigh the uh, the return on investment, you know that service isn't going to be viable. So it's about thinking about, okay, when we're delivering a service like this, what kind of costs are there, um, and and what kind of stuff do we need to think about, and, and what kind of stuff can we maybe um, identify for um, cost savings from a service delivery perspective. You know, can if we if we were to deliver this online, can we make a sort of cost saving? If we were to get the, the, the customer to do this, the user to do this, rather than an, an uh, a, a customer service um, advisor, you know, is this going to make a cost saving? So for Spotify, then it might include things like uh, music royalty payments, marketing costs. So in terms of actually, you know, advertising and that sort of thing, uh, and infrastructure costs and uh, support costs as well. So I've said again that. Um, Spotify, like a lot of kind of um, online um, sort of services, they, they, they try and push as much of that support um, onto the onto the user in terms of providing help and information online and in terms of not making it particularly easy for users to, to directly get help um, from Spotify. Um, and Kind of in relation to costs, a, a, a really key um, part of any service um, is the return on investment. Um, because as, as I said before, if a um, if a service isn't going to return, isn't going to um, deliver a return on investment, it's not going to last very long. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a monetary return. Um, you know, it could be in terms of um, you know improved customer satisfaction or brand recognition or 
or even greater employee satisfaction. But at the end of the day, you know, what's the benefit um, of, of this service, both to, um, well, not necessarily to users, because that's really looked at in terms of the, the proposition, but really in terms of the, the organisation that's delivering the service, you know, what's, what's, what's the benefit to them? Um, so for Spotify, obviously, from a, from a ROI perspective, it's, it's all about the premium um, sort of membership and getting people signed up to that, that kind of premium service. Um, and, um, you know, without, without that, it's, it, again, it's, it's not a viable kind of service. You know, if they're, they're not getting enough people signed up to that premium, you know, Spotify is not going to last um, sort of very long. It's going to, it's going to run out of money, so to speak. Um, and finally, kind of in 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 relation to to ROI, um, is the key performance indicators. Because because really, you know, if you can't measure something, if you can't track something. How how do you know that it's performing? You know, how do you know if something is delivering the kind of ROI that you hope it will be? And um, and, it, and with any service and or, or any user experience design, the, the KPIs are, are so important because um, you 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 know you you need to know how something is performing, but also you need to know okay, you need to think about what what kind of KPIs and, and what you know how we're gonna how we're we gonna measure this, how we're we gonna um, see if it's doing what we hope it's going to be doing or um, see if improvements and changes uh, are having the effect that we want it to be, and obviously the the KPIs, you know, they can differ from, differ from service to service. Um, so, for example, a a website might have slightly different, you know, it might have different KPIs from um, from a from a service, you know, like a um, a health service, for example, um, or a a banking service. Um, so you want to identify some of those those KPIs and and how you're actually going to measure some of those success factors. So for for Spotify, some of those KPIs might include things like um, the number of users. So not not just um, in, in you know in in, in total. Um, it's obviously important both from a, a usage perspective and you know from a from a marketing and advertising perspective um, in terms of the kind of premiums that they can charge for advertisers. See a really key KPI for Spotify is in terms of premium subscriptions. So you know what's their kind of conversion rate from from uh, people using Spotify with a free account to premium, um, and then some of these usage KPIs. So things like song plays and frequency of use. Obviously, with a service like Spotify, they want people to use it very very frequently. They want it to come back and, and use it time and time again. Um, and things like customer satisfaction and and, and sort of sharing. So um, so sharing things like playlists, so, so, so actively um, sharing content and, and other things on Spotify. So that's kind of quite a, quite a quick whistle-stop tour of, of the elements of um, the service model canvas. Um, and at the end of the presentation, uh, there's a link to, and you, you also see on, on the page, a link to some of the resources you can, you can download to help start to, to think about and, and capture some of that information. So um, obviously there's, there's quite a there's quite a lot there and as I said before you you, um, you don't you know you don't need to capture everything in, in a lot of detail and capture everything at, at, at sort of once. It's about um, a set of kind of thought starters and, and, and a way to, to ha ha start to bring some of this stuff together. Um, so when when might you use the service model canvas and and, and how might you go about sort of filling it in? So um, so I think, it, you know, in a, in a sense, you can, you know, you can, um, you can use it at different stages of a, of a, of a project or of a, um, of, of a, a product life cycle, but really it, it comes into its own in this kind of very early discovery stage when you're starting to think about um, a, a service. Um, so whether that's thinking about a, a new product or service or thinking about improving or um, an existing product and service and, and, and what kind of strategy and, and, and where it might be going. Because it, it really helps to start think about 
the the different elements that are part of that service and, and, and what you know what you need to focus on some of those questions you need to ask some of those assumptions that maybe need to be validated and identify um, you know the possible direction that you might go uh, and, and, a, and a really important part is about making this um, having a, a kind of a shared understanding as well so you know maybe you're not necessarily going to gain consensus you know, with a, with a product team or a project, project team, but you can start to flesh this st stuff out and get a shared understanding of, okay, this is, you know, this is who our users are, this is what our service proposition um, is going to be or what we think it, it is going to be effective, this is what our KPIs are going to be and that sort of thing. And in terms of um, filling out the, the canvas, I, I think it, it's, it's very much better to do it as a as a group exercise. You know, it's it's something which um, typically you know you want to do with a with a product team or with a you know with a, a good spread of stakeholders. So that might be you know business owners, that might be um, other other designers and, and people involved in that product. Uh, and what I found really useful is is to um, stick up a, a large version of the canvas and then go to go through it. Um, sort of segment by segment with a group, uh, maybe asking people to, to put stuff down on a post-it note and, and put it up, or to um, or just go through it and, and, and note down some of the some of the key things that come out. And and I think an important thing is is you know it's not about exhaustively capturing everything. It's about capturing some of those um, some of those initial insights um, that you might need to explore and look at further. You know you might think okay we've got some I We've got a pretty good idea in terms of our proposition, but we need to explore this further, or we need to validate some of this stuff more. Uh, and certainly, I found it—it it generally takes a good half a day to a day to properly fill it out, um, sort of as a as a group. Um, and again, it, it it depends. You know, if you're looking at an existing service, it's it's generally quicker because you've got lots of information about that. If it's a new product or service, it's going to take longer because there's going to be a lot more unknowns. So, um, so that's kind of a whistle-stop tour of the service model canvas. So you can download more. Um, so as I say, there's a, there's a link on, on the page to an, an article also outlining the service model canvas that actually has links to templates that can be used um, so for the canvas. Um, so thank you for listening. If there's um, more presentations available on, on my website and also on on SlideShare at Neil James sort of Turner. So yeah, um, give it a try. Try out the service model canvas, uh, and I'd be interested to know, you know, how you find it and and how effective you find it is. So thank you very much.